All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Old Moon Podcast, episode 27. Seven. Yes. yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yo, Tiltus is looking uh, more sexy than usual over there. Look at that. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, I am your host, Blue Squadron, uh, joined as usual by Jay. Hello, I'm Jaycoon of ET, V before the T. I'm an Awakening Wusa main with 760 gear score. I do a lot of endgame PvE content, such as Olin's, the dungeons, and I'm currently grinding for the telescope in Ulukita. And welcome to the Old Moon um, cast, uh, episode 27. <laughs> podcast, bro, you almost podcast. all the way to the end. I was like, what Trips is on the five-yard line, podcast. fumbles, <laughs> return for a touchdown. Like, gosh. <laughs> and we are joined this week not by Tiltus, but by special guest Alex. So, Alec, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Alec. I go by Alecos2 on Twitch and Asmanek in game. I'm a shy main. Been playing since 2016, since the game was released here in uh, North America. And yeah, long time player, long time fan. Have you played like you can't? So what did you play before Shy was released? So the first class that I ever played was Wizard. Uh, I played Wizard only until uh, Shy was released, and then when Shy was released, I really liked how it looked and swapped over to it. Started playing that, had a ton of fun. Basically dropped Wizard completely, and I played Shy and played Shy ever since. Oh wow! Okay, it's kind of like Jay. Jay was a Wizard, or I mean, a Witch. Witch, yeah. Witch, you were a Witch yes. main for a super long time. And then you yeah. discovered that you loved killing uh, rock golems. And then you were yes. a shy main for a super long time. And now you're a... What was I a shy main? I was a shy tag that no, only played shy for should. Olin's. That's right. You only played shy for Olin's life skilling, yeah. horse training, bartering, yes. um, and PvP, large scale PvP. But aside from all of <laughs> yeah. those things, yes, you're absolutely right. You were a witch I'm main a wi- yeah, when I you were a witch main, yeah. literally mm-hmm. just standing in Heidel. Um, <laughs> right on. Okay. Well, honestly, that kind of leads into our first uh, topic here, uh, because now mm-hmm. see Jay plays an Awakening Wusa now. Played Witch before. Played Shy before. Mm-hmm. Alec is a diehard Shy main, uh, and I am a Witch main with a Wizard tag. Uh, so I'm a bottom. Uh, oh. And I'm wondering, <laughs> and I and, and so we're starting our discussion off today for supports in Black Desert. So I'm curious, how do you guys feel supports are doing currently um, in, in comparison to? I guess we're gonna call them frontline tanks, even though they're they're not really they're not really tanks, uh, so to speak. Versus backline range versus the other kind of classes in the game. Jay, we'll start off with you. Um, generally, I think um, the support play SR is a lot less popular, right? Everybody wants to get those frags. Everybody wants to get those kills. Um, I do think it is still lacking in a way, but we have seen what happens when we give classes with really strong support capabilities um, that, right? We saw that with uh, Witch and Wizard with their percentage heals, and that was when that was nerfed, it wasn't as good before. It's still good, it's just not as good before. And so I think there's like a really um, strong, what, what's it called? There's like this line that's that's really thin, for what can be potentially be super OP in terms of uh, support abilities and what can be really strong in terms of support capabilities. Um, And so I kind of wish there was more. I kind of wish there was more classes that can bring something to the table when it comes to support. You know, like when I think of a support play style, it means you can allow the other you know team the other roles in your group to perform more efficiently, you know, and that can mean a lot of different things. And it could mean, you know, healing my tank so that they can tank longer. It could mean I can buff my DPS so they can do more damage. It means I can crowd control my enemies for the rest of my team. It means I can peel for others so they can focus on their objectives. It means I can be the playmaker for my team to take action, you know. Um, I think League of Legends does this really well when it comes to um, support classes with a lot of variety and stuff. And I kind of wish that um, BDO had more of that. Again, if each class had something to be able to bring to the table, because whenever I do like dungeons and stuff, it feels so bad when there's no shy. Um, and I've, I've I've done a dungeon group before where um, we, we couldn't get the shy. Um, uh, and I, I, I usually tend to be the shy, but, you know, I've already done that clear for the week for my shy and it felt the, the difference was so stark and I wish it was a little bit 
closer in that sense. Not to say that they should nerf shines or anything, but I wish that other classes had something more to bring that it doesn't feel as bad to not bring a shy for like party oriented stuff. And so, yeah. Um, so, and now for Alec, I saw Alec smile. He's like, man, when we don't have a shy for the dungeon, it sucks. He's like, yeah, it does, bitch. <laughs> Yeah, it does. <laughs> Alec, that's has something. <laughs> that's actually yeah. something that I really uh, am actually happy about for BDO is that. <laughs> of course he is. He's a shy man. <laughs> I, am. I am. But it's because, I mean, they have essentially tailor made shy to be non existent in offensive capabilities for PvP. So that, and we've sort of. Uh, forced it to the point where shy has been so beneficial in team play for uh pvp when we're running full defensive gear as well as for pve group content but i think that's a fair trade-off it's unfortunate that they did that because i would like to do some more offensive capable things for pvp but because they have told us multiple times no you can never do that um being able to support our allies as much as we do i think is a fair trade okay um yeah no i mean that's a good start so actually honestly jay kind of brought up a good point there's a lot of things that go into a support so most people when you say support they think of heals buffs mm -hmm. maybe you're thinking of debuffs um but jay it sounds like you want a more proactive leona or Alistar style of support where like, mm -hmm. like, yeah, maybe you're not doing any damage for your team or anything, but you are the play maker, the CC mm -hmm. getter. You know what I mean? Uh, now, mm -hmm. Shy, I don't think that the, uh, Alec, I don't think that the devs are actually too far away from this. They did actually give Shy um, like that bubble, which is a potentially a big playmaking skill. Um, it's not like bongos are kind of like less so much playmaking and more so I just, you know, I'm standing there sipping my tea while like the gamers are trying to game around me and they're all getting CC'd. But like, I think they are trying to make supports a little bit more proactive. Do you think that um, they should design more classes that are more like um, more of like a Leona or maybe maybe like a Valkyrie that really just doesn't do any damage, but is focused on primarily just being like the CC pre-engage? I think Shai kind of already does that um at least in uncapped situations because i mean like what i the way that i describe shy is in uncapped scenarios we are buffers debuffers distraction disruption and uh support for our allies um but it's when it goes into the cap stuff where we kind of have to take a back scene we're more backline uh buffers and like out in the wings protecting our back line from any encroachers that kind of thing um i think if they were even thinking about making another support oriented class they need to better optimize shy before they do that because shy is definitely not in like the best situation in regards to being a proper support we're sort of just like 75 80 percent of the way there but not all the way. And so if they were to make another support, they would they would essentially be taking away the opportunities that Shy may have and giving it to another class. Does that make sense? I, okay, what so, do you think Shy needs? Yeah, I was going to say, Sorry, like, yeah. What, yeah mm -hmm. why do you feel it's, it's 75, 80%? Because I feel like that's as support as it gets. Um, so the main thing that I feel that Shy is missing is A, a protection uh from a disengage or an engage skill um like most skills or most other classes have like an essay engage so like valkyrie's just got that huge just torpedo uh forward skill that's full essay mm -hmm. until they Pass the ludium. hit another class yeah uh draconias have their uh or awakening draconias have their just mad dash that's also support um full essay on that You've got uh, Tony Lucia's Hawk Pro. You've got Tony Hawk Pro Skater Shy though. <laughs> yeah, but it's fully unprotected. <laughs> oh no! I, yeah, no. It's, oh it's, no! It's, it's garbage. Yeah. So oh, no, it's if, not garbage. If they yeah. were even to put support uh, SA on, even just a little wind up, that would be great. Like just just a little bit mm -hmm. more. And then on top of that, Shy also does not have any combat passive at all. Our passives right now are life skill based that do literally nothing anymore. Maybe at the start when Shy was released the benefit of starting out as professional one for alchemy and gathering maybe 
would have done something but you can get to that in like 30 minutes nowadays and then the secondary passive is a 300 percent combat experience boost for life skilling which does literally nothing so we we essentially have nothing going for us in that regards so like being able to even have just like a dr passive or innovation passive would be nice as a sort of compensation mm-hmm. for um what we don't have right okay um yeah i mean i, I kind of feel like i don't know i i feel like shy is in a solid spot as far as like where i think they want the class to be it's much more stationary yes most shies are going to complain about its mobility that's like the primary thing that they're going to complain about but i think it's intentionally poorly mobile um because it, they don't really want you to play as an engage tool if you're going to engage you have to go through like very elegant style like i'm gonna play dead for like two minutes let the enemy offense ball walk over me and then try to land this sick bubble right like it i don't think they really want them to be proactive but like i think the direction that they should oh go ahead oh so um i've spoken to uh the gms and the developers a little bit from the uh adventures roundtable back in 2021 from the uh best in class tournament um and we had uh given them a bunch of different ideas um just like every other class had that opportunity to um most of the other classes had quite a few of their ideas implemented um in the future after that talk shy had literally nothing okay we, so we, took, we told yeah. them stuff and then they did nothing with it all right so. so explain to me what that was did you just like get in a so, discord call with them and then what sorts of things did you suggest uh yes so um from winning the or from being first and second place in the best in class tournament back in 2021 um you were invited to be part of the adventurers roundtable where they uh, gave us direct uh talks with the korean developers um for each individual class um at that time we had uh like all the shies that had um were participating in that we all got together for like two hours before the meeting and like had a huge spreadsheet of a bunch of stuff that we thought would be really good for the shy what we felt was wrong it could be worked on and we basically gave that to them we were all on the same page and then nothing came of it well what were some of the things on the on the spreadsheet oh uh let me see if i still have that document i might still have it but um How one long- of the things well, how, while you're pulling it up, how long was the meeting? Uh, it was about 45 minutes. It was supposed to be 30, but we went over time because we were really trying to go in depth and just explain to them how we felt. And a lot of the stuff that I uh, told you, like the lack of a passive, right. um, the hope for like a succession style of uh, play style for Shy, where instead of getting buffs and debuffs from our talent skills, we would be full offensive and be able to actually do, deal damage um but uh yeah i mean that okay wow okay yeah no and you said that they didn't (laughs) okay so they haven't done anything with it (laughs) yeah literally literally nothing from that uh came and then right after that misty hayes got nerfed i understand that bit (laughs) because that's when uh calfion elvia was just releasing kr and shies were abusing the hell out of trolls but um we actually sort of balanced out from that change c- because of the uh, extra accuracy and off of uh try this which is the tornado skill and the uh, evasion shred on 123 which is our main uh right. attacking skill so we actually kind of made out better in that regard just because it was an overall average better uh hit rate but um yeah not a lot of people were happy with the uh well i will say not far after that though they gave you guys a few quality of life buffs right like they haven't ignored shy completely maybe they didn't listen to you but like they they definitely like extended your buffs to like one minute and then they gave you all like you no longer have to choose Mm -hmm. your keystone passive alec did you actually did you prefer to like specialize your shy one over like one passive over another or did you just strictly like you're like oh well now i get all three it's fine now um I'm very happy that they gave us all the level three on all of our talent buffs because, I mean, picking and choosing was an interesting take. Um, but with the way that we had uh, kept getting like nerfed from our damage and uh, like our PVE damage was nerfed um, right after that as well, or right before that, sorry. Um, and so them giving us the 60 seconds 
buffs for ourselves, and at the time it was still 30 seconds for allies. Right. Um, one of them was only 20 changed. seconds. The resistance one was uh, only 20 seconds, wasn't it? So that was before. Um, before they made yeah. it so that shy buffs for ourselves were 60 seconds. When they increased it to 60 seconds for us, they increased it to 30 seconds for our allies. And then, uh, like, a few months later, they increased that to 60 seconds for allies as well. So I'm actually very happy that they did, did that because... Having to rebuff basically every 15, 20 seconds just to upkeep our allies' buffs was uh, pretty tough because you would you would basically like oh yeah buff yeah I was right doing before engage it would it would you would go for ten seconds and then everyone's buffs would drop off and then it'd be like an immediate um, decrease in mm -hmm. uh, yeah. produ productivity um, for the pushes and stuff and so being able to buff. Uh, or pre-buff for an actual engage and have that go through essentially the full engage is actually super beneficial because um, we're not having to worry about that anymore. So we're able to actually uh, make use of our uh, disruption and distraction capabilities now. So okay, uh, have you considered like so you you meant um, uh, Jay? Did you wanna do you wanna jump in? Oh, I just wanted to say that um, it does seem like uh, at least from the direction of everything that we've talked about and PAs, you know, changes with like buffs and stuff um it does seem like they want to lean more into that theme of maybe buffs and maybe buff, buffs and debuffs is the theme of shy and that's the that's what they want to lean into not and they don't want to make it like that engage and maybe instead of f focusing on that aspect we could just keep focusing on buffs and debuffs and i would love it if they just had more options of buffs and debuffs right before again they got all the buffs at level three and I did kind of, I did kind of miss that. I, I like that aspect of choosing one specific buff that was stronger than others. But it could be also cool to have different options for buffs that would maybe even rival the attack speed buff. Right? Instead of choosing the attack speed buff, you could even choose maybe, you know, a AP buff instead, just like a flat. You know, instead of choosing 20% attack speed, you could choose plus 60 AP or something like that. Or in instead of choosing 1500 HP, you could choose plus 60 DR or something like that as like a as a, another option. And so that could be their theme of being that support. Because I mentioned before, like supports are many different styles, whether it be, um, you know, the buffer, the crowd controller, the peelers, the playmakers and stuff. And then as for Shy, it, they could keep leaning towards that as the theme for Shy's support. And then they could make some other supports in the future that could lean more mm -hmm. into those other play styles that I was talking about. So that's what I was mm -hmm. thinking that they should do for Shy. But I don't know so, if that's what they should, that they want. <laughs> what do you want now? <laughs> so for one, Shy actually does have an AP buff. Um, we used to have our, our floor and leaves where we oh, yeah, get those Jay. stacks and no, it gives. That was, that was just an example. Oh, I, was, I wasn't specifically saying just like an no, AP buff in general, but more so like another option that would rival the um, attack mm -hmm. speed. I don't know what that yeah. would be, but again, you know. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would not say yeah. no to having more buff mm -hmm. options. Like They, uh, they have different instruments too, right? They keep adding like these different instruments. Right now you can only use yeah. your flute, your, your guitar, and your bongos, right? But they also yeah. have like a violin, a piano, and those could be those other buffs as options, you know? So. Yeah, it could be interesting. Um, I actually um, found my notes from back then, so we want to okay. go through that. Right on. Uh, well, We'll bounce back to it in a second. I'm actually curious. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Succession Shy. What if... I, I think it's pretty clear that they don't want to make Shy like a, a damage dealing class. But what if yeah. they turn Succession Shy into the Playmaker Shy? Sure, you take all the buffs and debuffs away, but now you make it like this disruption engaging. Like, so the Succession Shy got like the super mm -hmm. armored flow rang skate. You know what I mean? You could go in and then she got there and she like smashed the ground with her boomerang and it gave everybody in a big AOA a big <laughs> knockup or something. You know, like something big like that, right? Like you could be a big pre-engager, but there's you don't have any buffs or, or debuffs or anything. Like, how, do you feel like that that is like a reasonable direction that they could go? Yeah, that could be pretty cool. Um, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, that would be really interesting to see instead of like, I mean, if they're still dead set about not giving us damage, but being able to be like actively disrupting. So like what you said, like smash the flooring on the ground, make a huge AOE yeah. knock up or knock down or, or float or whatever. Yeah. That would be pretty cool. Um, and do that in exchange for our talent skills. That could be pretty cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think that it would encourage more people to be playing shy. Like right now, it's just like, oh, sorry, we can't take any more shy. Like every guild is like, oh, sorry, we're already at our cap of like four or five shies. You know what I mean? Like you can't, we can't have any more. I think that like that would encourage like, okay, we kind of want to have just like a few more shies now because uh, some of them are going to run our pre-engage and then some of them are going to run buffs, right? That's that's kind of funny because I experienced almost the exact opposite of that where every sh every guild is asking like, Hey, you do you play shy? Come come to us. Well, come you're a good shy. That, 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 you're the you're the anomaly. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Most of the time it's bro, do you have fingers? Why am I not buffed right now? <laughs> like I <laughs> You know what I mean? Like it's a your job is not hard. Um, but like, yeah, good shies are tough to come by. So you're you're in hot demand. Um, but like I think generally speaking, if your guild already has 10 shies in it, you're probably not gonna waste any more slots on shies, right? But like I think that we would a lot more space for shies, uh, even in Reforged, and I think Cho and all all, all the other guilds would do uh, if you could make them like this big engage tool. But you take away all that other utility, right? So like yeah, it would have to make the trade off worth it, right? And that would be pretty tough considering they haven't really done any like even minor tunings to shy in general for like the last year. So like I don't think that they really. Um, like pay attention too much to like the balancing towards shy you know yeah so yeah. in order for that to like even be on the radar they would have to be like actively looking at the class in general anyways so who knows it'd be cool doubtful but cool i think they usually pay attention to the classes that are played the most i do think shy is one of the least popular classes and that might be a correlation of why they haven't been getting too much looked on time or time in the spotlight for changes I don't happening. Doubt that at all. Maybe. Yeah. So Yeah, no. Um, okay. So all right, so let's 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 pivot over to uh Alex uh spreadsheet here. So what what kind of things did you suggest to them? I'm curious. This is the things that were suggested to the developers by Alec because he won the best in uh class tournament. Right? Yeah, so it was it was myself, uh Snow Coon, who won the EU tournament on both geared and trials. Um it was uh, Felsong uh, and Wutaru that um, were the other two shies from NA. Um, one thing that we all agreed on was making the uh, either a black star soul so that we're not missing the uh, extra monster damage that we are missing from either Dandelion or black star weapons from all the other classes and or making it taggable, which they said they would actually do that about a year and a half ago, and then they never did. Oh. Um, so that was that was okay. one thing that was universal Bro. between all of us. Do you do you have any idea why the soul is not taggable? I legitimately can't come up. With the reason. only reason that they have ever given it given us is because it is uh, directly uh, lore. affecting lore? some of our skills, oh. our talent <laughs> skills. Um, that it would make it too convenient, and because it's not sellable. So once they make it sell or like once they make it taggable, sorry. Once they make it taggable, they would have to make it sellable because otherwise people that wanted to play Shy would just either make a dandy uh, pen dandelion weapon or a black star weapon in the uh, Awakenings and then just tag it and not actually enhance it themselves. So right now we have to enhance it ourselves in order to utilize the, the best benefit that comes out of it. So it's uh. like... A okay, step, so like a bunch of different steps. Yeah, so does this make any sense? Yet? Why is it not sellable on the marketplace? <laughs> like, why? Like, because it's a talent weapon. It's not an awakening weapon. So it would have to. It would. Yeah. Oh, I know. It's it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, it's totally. Uh, it's spec it's uh, specified as that. So. Yeah. So there's a there is a Tuvala soul, isn't there? There is a Tuvala soul. Yes. And okay. so you can make a Tuvala soul. But you just have to do that, it from base. Correct, but you can get as many Tuvala souls from the seasonal character from the turn in for, of the materials as you want. So you okay. don't have to worry about. Um, so, like in a normal character of Shy, you only can get two souls per character. Yeah. Uh, one from the main quest line and one crafted from the Camasilf Temple in Medea. Otherwise, you have to just. No, you can uh, do that. Yeah. It's a it's a quest line that you can do. Hmm. So you, in order to repair it, you either have to make a bunch of different shy characters, level it up to fifty six, do the main quest line, 
uh, for your talent skill, get that extra one, and then do, and then just trade that to your other character. Or you have to uh, repair it through memes. Memes, yeah, memory yeah. fragments. Wow. Wait, that's actually okay. All right. So, if you have the Tuvala Soul, the big question is, can you make that into a guaranteed pin? Can you do that? No, you cannot. Okay. Well, there's the problem. Like, why? Why can't you do that? Every I, other pen can do it. this. Yep. We don't know. You can't sell it on the market. So the, the argument cannot be that, oh, well, then you'd be able to sell it on the marketplace, right? Because you can't sell guaranteed pens on the marketplace. So, like, that's out the window Correct. for every everything in the game. There's really no excuse to force a new player um, to enhance the soul by themselves. Um, that's how it's been since the class was released. Oh, I know. It took me 67 attempts for my pen soul. <laughs> Choice yeah, literally no, told a... me he wouldn't he, he wouldn't grind with me until I had a pen soul. And I, I went through two thing. keyboards just smashing yeah, them <laughs> against the desk. For some reason, the soul is either enhanced immediately or it takes forever to do. Yeah. Um I it's know there's um there's another player that's on the shy discord that is up to like two hundred fails on their pen soul. <laughs> they haven't done it. Uh it, there's like only a handful of us that have gotten it in uh, the middling amounts of like 10 to 15 attempts. Otherwise, it's like one or two attacks or 70 plus. Like, it's crazy. It is absolutely crazy. But it has the same, supposedly, the same enhancement rate as dandelion weapons. So That's, I mean, uh, yeah, it does. It has the same enhancement rate as dandelion weapons, which we enhanced in 2017. Like, I, like, no, yeah. like, we don't, nobody enhances, like, nobody anymore comes into my guild and goes, dang, I failed 70 times on my pen dandy. Do you know what I would tell dandy. that person? <laughs> Do you know what I would tell that person? I'd say Goodbye. Axiom is recruiting. Have fun. <laughs> there is no way your IQ is not high enough. Goodbye. Like, there is no shot. But, like, for the soul, there's really no escape to it. I think it's one of the yeah. dumbest mechanics in the game. I think it's something... I don't know if they just don't want to listen to feedback or they, they are intentionally hearing the feedback and then just saying, no, we want it this way. It's hard to tell. So when or one of the things that the developers had told us actually at the Adventures Roundtable was that they have a specific design in mind for every class. And whenever they make changes, yep. they have to like balance it on a scale. So like if they add extra damage they have to take away something to balance the scale back out that kind of thing unless it is uh, obviously out of balance between the other classes and so I yeah well that's, i mean that's, that's why Zerker got <laughs> objectively buffed in the most recent patch with absolutely no nerves is that it was oh i know yeah I, no like the, so okay the thing okay that they right. told us <laughs> oh go ahead go ahead go ahead go ahead. the 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 things that they told us at that uh meeting have not really correlated since then. So there have been multiple classes that have just gotten just overall buffs um, in sort of balancing to the newer classes. And then because that one class got buffed, this other class got buffed to bring it back in line with the other one. And then this other class got buffed. And it's like just a cascading right. effect of right, everyone right, right, getting right, buffed. Right. Yeah, yeah. Except for Shy. Different... Shy's, Shy's back here. <laughs> off the, uh, off the um, okay, I will say that I did speak with the, the developers um, and the people when they came to the Calfion Ball. Um, so, like, I did ask them how they do their balancing and what goes on. And so, essentially, what they have set up on this team is that there is one person on the developer tier, on the balance team, for every single class in the game. And whatever that person says, they have, like, this image in their head for, like, how the class is supposed to be structured. Whatever that person says goes. And I was like, really? And then I started walking around to every Korean at the ball going, which? 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 <laughs> Location? 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 Not location. Yeah, like, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, if, you, like, if you were to really? say no, I'm location like, is the translated name for wedge in the global. <laughs> that's the, <laughs> oh that was God. like an inside <laughs> joke right there. It's like, it, like, if you know, you know. Yeah. 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 So, like, I, yeah, I was literally walking around asking, like, I'm like, all right, are you the dude? No, that's the translator. Are you the dude? No, that guy does the patch. No, like, like, no. Um, well, they so, don't have to be Korean, you know. They could be. They no, they're could all just speak Korean. No, they're, they're all, all okay, Korean. Yeah, <laughs> super Korean. Yeah, no. I had to the only people that weren't Korean in their entourage was Jay Security, who I unironically had to dive past 
uh, in order to speak with Jay. I waited for them. I, I was sitting on this. Yeah, I was like sitting on the, the corner, like by the stage. I was just chilling out waiting. And then like I waited for the security, like got distracted. They were looking the wrong way. And then I just like dove at Jay and was like, Jay, sign my shirt. I have my children. Um, And he, he, he signed my shirt. And I got to ask him a few questions. Even security turned around like, whoa, whoa, dude, you got to chill out. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> but like yeah no they're absolutely all korean um and i don't think that i actually think that their their balance team actually does a pretty good job um overall um i do think that like shy has been somewhat neglected mainly because supports in general i think are handled poorly like i think that like they could design supports better like they could give shy succession uh and do it the way that i kind of outlined there sure yeah you, know, you, know, you still don't get the offensive stats but i don't think that they want shy to have i wanted to i think they want it to be unique and i think that they could yeah. make more classes in the future which is my next question so if you were going to design a class that was going to be a support alec you you've played supports uh, you played wizard then you played shy if you were going to mm -hmm. design a class in bdo or you were looking for some sort of support mechanic maybe you've seen it in other games you want to see in BDO, what kind of mechanics would you love to see implemented um, for a support in this game if you were going to design a new class? Oh, um, I mean, honestly, I think Shy covers a lot of what I would want and what I do want in a in a support class. So it's hard for me to really think of a support oriented new class, you know, because Shy's have the buffs and the debuffs that we are able to apply to our allies and our enemies. Um, I think just adding a few more things would be nice. Would you, okay, would you like the next support to be like Shy in that, like, okay, it primarily is focused on either engage tools, um, or debuffs slash buffs or like unique, uh, effects like that? Or would you rather it be like a Valkyrie where it's got the offensive capability with all these other support, uh, stats worked in or like a, like a wizard or a witch where you've got the range aspect to, to it? No, I, I, if they were going to make another true support class, they would definitely need to make it of the same vein where we're not, they're not able to do damage, but they have to have a proper amount of support capabilities in order to counterbalance that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, like, maybe having, um, like, 20 or 30% ignore CC resistances on uh, against other classes. Because, like, um, some classes have um, inherent grab resist for instance for like corsair or um sage has like a permanent sa when they come out of their uh their void teleport or whatever right so like some classes have that inherent cc resistances having a class that has the ignore like overall ignore resistance because i know some like striker has ignore grapple resistance right Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so like, does warrior having a Zerker, class that like mystic. is focused specifically on getting those um, CCs and having the inherent ignore resistance to um, sort of benefit that would be pretty cool. I don't know. I feel like resistances should probably just be removed in favor of a better system. Well, like if they I... were to do that, they would have to make every class have some string of. Uh, full SA protection or uh, full regard protection. Not all classes have that, right? So they would have to fully rework that system first before removing the CCs. Yeah. No. The CC resistance. I mean, I agree. I think that um, the... Um, I don't know. Like, I, I think that resistances just could be wiped away and then instead they could put a new system in that helped classes that didn't have a grab, that objectively buffs classes so that they could play... That Like, as long as there's some sort of gameplay... That you can have against grab classes you're probably going to be okay whether you got to give uh corsair i don't know if iframes are necessarily the answer but like that maybe you could what? add a new type of protection or something too like what about um you know for grab classes they would apply some sort of debuff and if you stack it at least five times then you could guarantee the grab or something like that for like CCs, so like, oh, you you broke their forward guard, and now that's that's also maybe that's another form of CC if you break the forward guard or something like that. That could be you, the system to do it. You know? Wait, whoa, whoa, did you just suggest that the grab is guaranteed if they break the forward if, guard? If, uh, if, no, like, well, yeah, roll that back. Some other You're gonna roll that back right now before <laughs> no, I no, roast no, you not, for it. Not, not the grab. <laughs> I'm just suggesting, like, just throwing out ideas of how to rework the CC, because instead of 
um it's either you catch them or maybe you sort of i don't know you apply again a debuff right that keeps stacking up and then if it reaches a certain threshold it would automatically cc or something like that maybe that would be a better way to implement the system i don't know just throwing um, out the idea yeah i mean like i think that maybe you could just allow grabs to to grab people in a forward guard but maybe take it away from super armor or something um like i and just remove resistances from the game like i i I don't know if resistances is necessarily the way to go would you guys like jay what do you think like you play a lot of supports i mean you're playing Mm -hmm. awakening wusa as the only awakening wusa on this server (laughs) would you like to see awakening wusa with more support capabilities or do you like that it's more like like just okay it's got a little support. support here so the support ability that we got was just a little boring. It's just HP and MP regen. It was it was a beautiful looking ability, but I just thought it was a little bit boring. Um, and I feel like in terms of its lore, I don't know if anybody looked into the Awakening Wusa lore. She is... Um, uh, so as Megu was uh, connected to the Fox Spirit, um, Awakening Wusa had a, a different spirit called Sahi, which was this, this netherworld spirit. Basically... Um, someone who oversees life and death. And I feel like as a support class, um, or if if it was going to be a support class, it would be involving the idea of life and death. And so like my idea for it, I think I mentioned it a while back was maybe instead of that ability being just an AOE regen, it could be like an AOE res or something like that. That would be a really cool, you know, support ability for it. I don't know if that's a Jay, you got to you got to or... put the gun down. Do you know what's better than do you know what's better than a 100 show nation literally <laughs> ramming their staves up your ass and turning in, you into a kebab? Well, there's going to be only one of them because nation. Awakening Woods is not popular, right? <laughs> No, there would be a lot more Awakening. Would you be surprised? Overnight, there'd be like 70 show members that are now playing Awakening. (laughs) Um, I think it would be crazy. Um, I I did have... um, So when you were asking um, Alec the question of um, another support class, I was thinking... Uh, people kept talking about like, oh, Necromancer, Necromancer being the next class. But what if Necromancer is the next support class? It had maybe it had a lot of support capabilities, not necessarily in the way you would think support would do it, but more so in a way that it would be involving. Like when I think of Necromancers, I think of the Diablo 2 Necromancer. And Diablo 2 had some, had an iconic skill tree that was super, super powerful in supporting your other teammates, which was curses. And curses had these really debilitating effects. And I think that could be a way of being that support niche is to apply curses, which I don't know, like ideas I had to throw out was maybe like um, disabling abilities. Like, oh, if you got applied with this debuff, you can't use your BSR abilities. Or, oh, if you got applied with this debuff, you can't use your dashes or movement or something you just have to run or something like that maybe (laughs) that is that is sketchy i think like removing (laughs) people's ability to play their class Mm -hmm. is (laughs) dangerous i think that people would get so i think you've heard how outcries over every other class in the game i think that there would be more uh u.s dollars spent on (laughs) breaking their equipment just over that one class than any other class that's ever come out. Um, oh, breaking I, equipment? That could be a curse. Your dur- the durability would they would they would target your durability. I already do that it all would... the time anyway. I, now I have you cheap don't... keyboardism. I'm like constantly yeah. dumping fluids on myself for whatever reason. So like I keep breaking all my stuff. Uh, uh, I'm actually okay. So here's an idea. Have you guys ever thought about okay? So what if they just added like a super cool support of one support ability to every class in the game instead of ever coming mm. out with another pure support class again? Would you favor that? That'd and like cool. everybody gets like one support ability, and, and then everybody like they, can bring something to the table, and everybody yeah, brings think, something uh, to the I table like versus <laughs> the okay, like only certain classes are bringing things to the table. Alec, what do you think about that? I think that would be a pretty interesting take. It would take. I mean, that if it if they were to give a support skill to every class that's what 25 different skills that they would have to create right yeah well they, i mean like they, would they be all unique to each individual class so ideally like, yeah so well i mean woosa already has but like awakening woosa for example it's a big aoe like like little thing that she drops and then everybody gets a bunch of hp regen for like the next 30 seconds right mm-hmm. like that's and that's unique to woosa 
um which already has a bunch of support capabilities so i don't have to add that because they don't want to touch honestly it's better when they don't touch my class anyway um but like it, you could get like warrior like warrior does have a couple support capabilities you know what i mean but like dark knight could mm -hmm. get a support capability of some kind uh maybe like a rose buff or something I don't know, like mm -hmm. I like I don't know, like, you, like a bed of roses could or rise up on like there. A, a, like a battle cry, like think of Barbarian from Diablo 2. It had like war cries that would buff. Yeah, be kind of I mean, interesting. It would be very cool to see something like that. It would be also probably pretty difficult to find something unique for each individual class in order to make that mm -hmm. work. But I think that that would probably be a safer go about it than a new support class. Mm hmm. Okay, so you okay, so you would favor that. You would I favor would, yeah. that direction over another support class. Making another class. Mm -hmm. Loki just doesn't want another replace. He doesn't want to replace his shy. He doesn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> don't 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 worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um. So okay. So like in terms of overall engage tools, um, like Jay, I know you touched on this a little bit. Um, what would you like to see? You said like you you want to see like the playmakers. Like whether it be Leona, Alistar, I'm I'm blanking on the other, uh, the the girl with the lance uh, in League of Legends. Like, what types of engage tools would you like to see out of a support class? Um, engage tools. I know you said hmm. playmaking potential. So like what? Like... <laughs> I'm I'm just thinking of the hundreds and hundreds of league champions that I'm. Like, oh, for the love of God! <laughs> like I, for right example, <laughs> like you could just you could have one be like a like Corsair, for example. If we wanted to give one to Corsair, but like mm -hmm. to say this is a new class, um, they could mm -hmm. come come in with like a giant tidal wave. They just like Ooh, you know yeah. four times the width of it, and it could lift everyone off their feet for like a second, and but it's a wave, so they like, they went up and then down, mm. and then they can move again, and then it moves them in a direction a little bit. Mm. And I mean, it's not just a normal float; it could, it could just move them in a direction. Um, yeah, like a like a larger um, right, and it's really wizard wave. Yeah, kind long of thing. Ca yeah, yeah long cast time, but also it's got a really long. Um, think like Nami Wave and League would be similar to it, but again, Nami Wave doesn't move you; it just kind of knocks you up and then sets you back down again. Um, this could like physically displace you, uh, and move you a certain duration, and it's really slow moving and takes a long time to cast, and that's the workaround for it, right? But I think mm. that that would be really cool if you had like five of them casted at the same time. You know what I mean? And just like started running. I think mm. that would ultimately shape large scale PvP for the better. I think that that would be super cool. It would add a dynamic. It would be pretty cool to have just like more large scale like terrain altering kind of yeah, what about jarvan like fours mm -hmm. you know what i mean like what if you what if you had somebody like literally jump in and just smash a battle arena down mm -hmm. and there's like a bunch of like terrain came up and now you were an arena with them and they got a super buffed inside like the walls of their little arena like that would be really cool you could lock people yeah. into place like that as well or even like a mass uh uh wave or push away from uh yourself so like if someone were to jump into a ball and then just do a skill and it it knocks everyone oh, knock like back. 20 meters oh. yeah, yeah 20 like oh. 20 meters and around them and... off cliffs you know <laughs> that'd be kind of fun that'd be pretty cool right like i think that like um there's all kinds of different things that they could like try to do with different engage tools and they're constantly the reason i'm trying to bring some of this stuff up is because they're constantly doing stuff like this with our classes um, like the like the new classes are always like look at the cool thing that we've discovered that we can do with a client, you know what I mean, um, or with our engine. Like Wusa and Megu, uh, Corsair, like they're constantly showing us all these different things uh, that they can do now. Now that they're better mm -hmm. at, I guess, designing classes, and I think that moving forward, I'd love to see them do that, or maybe go back and do that. They could literally just turn Awakening Mystic into this. Like they could just rework. I like they honestly they could just full rework the class and i think that most mystic mains would probably be okay with that you know yeah. what i mean so like um okay so i think all right anything else we want to touch on for support i know that that, that kind of got we were worried we weren't gonna have enough stuff you know what i mean like, I, <laughs> yeah 45 minutes later oh yeah no kidding holy crap um i do i do want to talk about war of the roses a little bit um are you guys up to date on like the current global labs patch and like what they kind of release on it Yes. Mm, I read the notes, yeah. 
Okay, so what do you got? What are your guys' thoughts for those for our listeners that don't know? Uh, War of the Roses is the 300 versus 300 game mode um, that they've been teasing for a while now since the last Calfion Ball, and they've been giving update giving us updates over the course of the last year or so. Um, but now we saw the first big update that like gave us the details of War of the Roses is now on the Global Labs, and so essentially it is this 300 versus 300 where you have one lead guild and one shot caller for all 300 people that is essentially trying to tell people what to do, like some enders game uh thing you know what i mean and so there's and it's it's very similar to battlefront 2 for those of you that have played it you can spawn at a forward outpost and then you have to try to take uh more outposts more and more outposts until you reach um the very last like castle outpost and at every single outpost you have to fight pve mobs in addition to fighting Mm -hmm. uh the pvpers it is an uncapped game mode uh and there is ocean content for it as well so I'm curious what your guys' thoughts on it. Jay, I'll start with you. So, you know, I'm not the most excited about it since I'm not that much into PvP as much as PvE, but I will at the very least give it a chance because, you know, it's this brand new thing. Um, and, uh, you know, I reading stuff, I, I'm not really one of those, like, cerebral thinkers, but more I love so it. like a visual thinker, visual learner kind of dealio. So I, I whenever player. I'm reading notes, <laughs> whenever I'm reading notes and, like, theoretics and stuff on paper, it's hard for me to imagine what's going to be like. So I don't ever have an idea how to process it. But when I when I do do the do, right, on hands-on, and that's when I instantly understand what's going on and what it's going to be like. So I feel like it's going to be one of those things where you just kind of got to wait until it's out for people to really know what's what's going on with this mode and who knows maybe i might actually enjoy it we'll see it's interesting how they're inc- incorporating um pve objectives into this i like this that mode. that is a good um, step <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um I, I don't know how it's gonna be like I, I don't know how like how strong the bombs will be like maybe they'll be like um, you know how like I, I always make a comparison to to League, but League has you know a dragon and there's the Baron. Maybe it'll have like the, those big elites that might Ooh. give your team the Why don't edge, we just, right? What if we you just know? turn BDO into a MOBA? Into what if we made into... lanes? What if we had lanes and then <laughs> yeah, there's like what if a we final had lanes, lane? yo? And there was oh. a there was a jungle, you know? <laughs> I mean, the way that it's reading on the global labs. It sounds like mm-hmm. it could be similar to that, right? Because, I mean, there are mm-hmm. going to be objective points that, that each team is going to be going after. And mm-hmm. when you uh, capture one of the neutral points, there's going to be like a mass buff that is applied to your team, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so is, it may yeah. come to the point where, I mean, plus it's PvEVP at each of these points. So mm-hmm. there's going to be that as- that kind of aspect where it's going to be... Uh, similar to a MOBA or, is or, it, or games like that, right? Would you? Okay, maybe it's just me. But if I'm in this game mode, I would love it to be some Calamity 7 fucking golden pig looking ass. <laughs> I walk up on the I, I, I walk up on the point and this dude's just swinging. Wham! And he just wipes <laughs> out like three people. You know what I mean? I'm like, and oh, shit. Ocean, that would be so ocean, sick. And Im- Imugi comes out of nowhere in the ocean. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's yeah, that one. Yeah, because this dragon yeah. starts coming, and you're like, God, you know, like <laughs> that would be super sick, right? Like, yeah. On on the patch notes, they did say that like the the top mob for the Camasilvia side is going to be Olin's golems, and the top for the Camasilvia is going to be Ergon. And so, like, they have they have that sort of aspect where there's the the large mob style yeah. mm. uh, for each point that that people are going to have to face. So, I mean. Obviously, they're probably gonna just ramp up those stats on those mobs. I would heavily. hope so, because if it's just yeah, a golem, cause... Jay just started licking his lips when you said, "Really? It's a <laughs> I golem." I know the mechanics. <laughs> I know how to bait nukes. You know. So yeah. Nice. So like, Dude. it's it's gonna be like I mean, like what Jay said. It it's definitely gonna take us getting our hands on the game mode for us to really understand how it's gonna play out. But on paper, on the patch notes, it reads really cool. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, like, I like I know a lot of players are like, oh, we're never going to use this. Why are you giving this to me? I think it's important that they give us stuff like this every once in a while that gives, like, that end game player something to do uh, on a PvP. Mm-hmm. And I like that they, they're starting to push... The PvPers don't realize it yet, but they're starting to push PvE, like, large-scale <laughs> PvE content in. Like, it's like the first dip our toes <laughs> into large-scale PvE content, right? And, like, I'm sure mm-hmm. that they're going to be watching it closely to see... 
Um, okay, what's the feedback look like on this? Because other games have tried to implement PvE VP content and it's just crashed and burned. Sometimes it's really good, so, but most of the times it's been really bad. So like, I'm sure mm -hmm. that they're going to be watching this like a hawk. Um, like, which side would you guys rather be on? Um, Odalita. Yeah, no, I'm oh, a like dark knight. Yeah, yeah, I'm oh. a dark knight T3 sub, man. <laughs> So absolutely no slap a collar on me yeah. i'm in oh well, yeah you know totally what I'm for sure because yeah step golems, on me you know <laughs> yeah okay yeah this guy yeah. um plus now they did say that there's also going to be rewards for it they didn't specify what the rewards were going to be mm -hmm. but if the rewards are super nice for the winning side i mean that'll also entice people to actually want to participate mm -hmm. so yeah no for something what, what do you think it would be like what what do you think it should be um maybe, maybe like region drop rate similar to like castle buff maybe maybe like monetarily similar to like a, a siege win would be pretty cool no, no, mean, no, no. a siege win it's got to be better than that the think bigger maybe. stop stop no, no 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 don't don't get my ideas like <laughs> this minimum, minimum, you have minimum. to spend you have to spend, <laughs> so this is the highest end uncapped content right okay H hundreds True. of people and you have to spend 500 mil just to do it that's true. That you do have true. to spend 500 mil just to get into it. So on top of all of the consumables that you're going to be downing, um, like it's some yeah. sort of like hot dog composition uh, competition. Like mm -hmm. you, like so you're going to be spending billions of silver on this stuff plus 500 mil to get invested. You better be getting like 10 billion. In yeah. I know that sounds crazy, too. but this is the end game players. Why can't you just, and it's once every two weeks, you're spending 500 mm. mil just to put it in the pot. What if you won, you got 10 bill, you know what I mean? Or something dope. equivalent mm. to that. Or like you got like a hundred deep sea elixirs and then like a bunch of other like really sick consumable items that technically you could sell for 10 bill or you could use, you know, yourself. I mean, that would be really cool. I would, I would not be opposed to that at all. Because, yeah, I, I mean, mean like, like you said, like, it's it's an every other week thing. Uh, there's a, a huge cost just to get in. There's a cost to participate in terms of, like, uh, consumables. So, I mean, yeah, a, a good reward is necessary for people to want to participate. Because if it's not a good reward, I mean, it, it might be... If it's not a good reward, it would have to be amazing in terms of uh gameplay in order for people to want to do it exactly if it's not if it's yeah. neither of those it's just going to be a dead content on release DOA. it'll have yep. one good week of the first week maybe the second week or the second uh go around but after that it'll, it would yeah, people off. are going to write it off yeah uh, mm -hmm. I, and keep in mind that the main guild that is doing it has to spend 10 billion in guild funds which is again is the first time uh mm -hmm. that we've seen them like put something in like this we're like okay yeah you got to spend all your guild funds on this um, which honestly I think is a good thing. Like guild funds are kind of tough to spend. You're trying to give it all to your guild, but like there's really nothing else to do with it other than to buy siege forts. Uh, but also it does make you, it does give you a little bit of pause for sure. I think it changes. Did you guys see how they choose the lead guild? Uh, it's oh, yeah. by the points. Yeah. Points, points on, on the siege, right? Yeah. On the, it's... on the tier, on the nodes. I'm yes. pretty sure. Right? You have to, very... you have to own a tier four or a T four or a mm -hmm. T five node, first of all, mm -hmm. uh, to even apply. And then it goes to whoever has accumulated enough node war points or like war yeah. points Later over points. the last two weeks. And you get points mm -hmm. by taking more nodes. So like, mm -hmm. I think that that changes the node war dynamic dramatically because currently node wars is based around setup fights where like everybody drops on the same node and everybody just eats um I'm each sure. other right but like you can't do that if everybody's trying to get as many nodes as possible to try to yeah. get into war in the roses on the second week so right it's it's really going to come down to how good of a reward and how good of a gameplay or game style this new system is because if it's fantastic then yeah that's going to shift the node war scene uh pretty dramatically it's going to um mm. make a lot more guilds want to participate in the tier four and tier five nodes which are yeah. the uncapped. And so, yeah, that, that would... This has the potential to really shift the PvP scene in regards yeah. to, like, right. the set PvP mm -hmm. systems. It, it really does push the high-end guilds. Like, if it's good, if it ends up being, like, really solid, fun, like, PvP endgame content, it has the potential to push the high-end guilds 
into the high-end nodes and keep them away from doing like you know cho or digi dropping on a t1 node war and just eating the new players you know what i mean yeah. it takes away from that entire aspect um mm -hmm. so like i think i think that's like potentially like a really good thing again if if they can make it work i know there's a lot of like um speculation about how much lag is going to be involved and i know that the developers mm. are kind of crossing their fingers and saying it's a big enough area it won't lag it's a big enough area it won't lag you know like over and over again and hoping that it'll work uh do you guys think it's... that do you, do you do you think like it is a pretty big region i looked at the map um, is it instanced yeah. i don't think it, i don't it believe so to be instanced no it's i don't not, think uh... it is it's but it's definitely going to be particip or partaking in the camisilia and the odalita region mm -hmm. um with it being only on one server, though, one, they'll be able to sort of concentrate. They've got to uh, be able to concentrate as much server power as possible, as much as possible on that server that is, the game is going to be on. Right. I'm not sure that's how servers work. I, I'm not like I'm not entirely. So I'm not no, I'm not a server guru. <laughs> I don't, I don't design them. <laughs> but like, I think that like they, they're going to have to kick everybody that's not participating in the in it off of the server yeah. and i think that the idea is that in a typical siege the reason that we suffer from lag really badly is when three or four guilds typically are all around each other and there's like mm -hmm. 300 people on the screen and you're like the developers have put together this wonderful powerpoint presentation for you you know yeah. um but in war <laughs> of true. in war of the roses you theoretically should not have more than about 30 or 40 people on your screen at any given time given how they've tried to set it up. Now, like, it's possible mm -hmm. that you could have all 600. Like, at the end, I think it's going to be really bad. I think at the start, the lags, it's going to be the opposite of Siege, right? So, yeah. like, at the start, it's going to be nice and spread out. I don't think, like, hopefully the lag is not that bad because as it progresses and the players start to converge on that final point, I think it's going to get really bad. I think that, like, like you're going to have everything converging on this mm -hmm. final point, and there's going to be 600 players with PvE shit, and everyone, no one can tell what the hell is going on. Um, that is where I think the lag is really going to hit everybody. I think capping out at 600 players is also going to help a little bit, because when you're in these really large node wars or this, the sieges, I mean, there's the potential to have, like, 1200 1400 1500 players all in one spot and that's when it, it truly is like please try again in a moment four seconds later yeah. please try again yes. in a moment you get teleported back 20 seconds yeah, you're not getting on your horse kind of just stuff. start running yeah like <laughs> yeah like so i think capping it out at 600 is a smart play um restricting it to the players that actually are wanting to participate in it is also going to make it uh is going to be beneficial so i think it has everything on paper to make it really, really good. It's just going to come down to the way that it's implemented. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just like the only, like, again, like everyone's super worried about the lag. I'm not really crazy worried about it until you get to that final, yeah. that final point. And then I'm like, dude, I don't even know. Like, we can't even handle three guilds on top of each other in Siege. That's 300 people if all three of them are capped out. There is no way... That you are talking about and then there's like the queen like the they've made this queen's like oh it's gonna be this badass fight where like there's all the all these the little mobs and the queen is just beating the shit mm. out of everyone you know what i mean like you're not even gonna be able to see it it's just gonna be like a powerpoint presentation and then everybody's dead that's the primary thing that i'm concerned about but i think early on mm. it's gonna get really good feedback but i don't really know how you fix that like that final like boss like you're pushing the final point uh thing like maybe they could like I don't know, open up some sort of counterattack strategy for like the where like mobs start attacking your your rear points, you know, to pull some people away from uh the queen's castle. I'm not really sure how they're going to do it yet, but either way, I think we're all very excited for it. Mm -hmm. Um but uh okay, we have run out of time and again, Jay, mm -hmm. you were worried that we weren't going to have uh, <laughs> enough stuff, bro. We found 46 so minutes thing, on support. Yeah. One thing I do want to add, it's interesting how um you know like when BDO first came out, it was um advertised as this like the large scale was advertised as the sort of iconic defining thing that BDO is known for. And then it's taken like a, the very good step back from that and then now they they're adding this War of the Roses and I think trying to do that again with um you know it's as a kind of callback to what is once known for in the past and i think that direction right. is kind of really cool so that's yeah, my I final think that's thoughts sweet. on 
War of the Roses. I, I just, I hope so we'll it's successful as far as the PvE standpoint. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I want mm -hmm. more of that. Honestly, I would love to play. What if, instead of getting yeah. farmed by Cho all the time, we got to play with Cho, and then we just all got to farm mobs together expertly? <laughs> like a raid yeah like you like know? some sort of yeah like that would be crazy um like oh my god stuff for me i would not be opposed to that i'm gonna be honest yeah like i think like if it was some really dynamic like you like you really had to macro and like th like do shit and like all the guilds were responsible mm -hmm. and like you had to send different people different places i think that every single guild in the game would get on board with that sure it would yeah. kill large-scale pvp but who even cares at that point because everybody's <laughs> happy now um <laughs> okay uh alec you want to go ahead and give us uh, your outro here uh my general outro or no what, no no, no. just, just, well, like, just, just you... shout yourself out get like Shut tell up, everybody <laughs> like you're a special guest you know tell people where they can find you you know what i mean okay uh so yeah you can find me at twitch.tv slash alec oz 2 um a l e c o z two um i technically have a twitter alec oz two i never post on it uh i have a discord if you want to find me you can mm -hmm. do a discord command in my chat um you're participating in that thing right that aoa thing right oh yeah i'm participating in yeah. the arena of arsha tournament the watch uh, this, this weekend really mm -hmm. oh, which team yes. are you playing for uh i'm in enrage right now in the open tournament with who? Uh, with Akari and Memo. Oh, oh, good. Yeah, yeah. You okay. guys are gonna. You. Gotta, <laughs> they are. <laughs> they are. Gonna, you're on the other side of the bracket, right? Like, there's. Uh, uh, yes. Oh, sweet mother of God. I so. Okay, good. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a pretty juicy team. Right on. Okay, yeah. Thanks so much for Alec for for coming on. We really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Um, Jay. Yeah. Yes, I'm Jay um, Kuhn. I do a lot of uh, endgame PvE content. I'm always happy to answer any questions about the game. And you can find me over at twitch.tv slash jkuhnvtv before the T. Yes. Okay, right on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am Chorus <laughs> and Blue Squadron. There is always content okay. happening uh, on my channel. I have new YouTube videos come out every single day so there's always something to watch there's always something to do uh and then we stream four days a week saturday sunday monday tuesday and we do kind of a different event style uh stream uh on this stream it's kind of a different take on video content so make sure you check it out um guys from all of us here at the old moon podcast make sure that you like we're on spotify we're on apple Podcasts. so mm -hmm. if you're on your way to work and you just want to listen to the podcast it's always up on my youtube mm -hmm. um immediately after the podcast finishes airing a couple hours after i get it uploaded and and cleaned up mm -hmm. um and then it is immediately up on spotify and apple Podcasts as well so that you guys can always uh take a look at that mm -hmm. content uh and from it, if oh, you guys ahead. have any um i just want to say if you guys have any like topics you want us to talk about leave it in the comments Absolutely. Leave it in the comments. Jay, mm. thank you. I always forget to say that. Yeah, we do yeah. definitely read all of the comments uh, on our podcasts, uh, and we take them into consideration for the topics for the following week. Uh, so from all of us here at the Old Moon Podcast, this has been episode 27. Have a great rest of your week.